Today we're going to be doing real physics. <laughs> mythology if you die a glorious death in battle then the Valkyries will come and take you to Valhalla so these are these battle beast things and they're kind of like angels but not really but anyway yes they're they're kind of feminine but they're scary looking and like in the hmm? the way in the Nintendo's we should be considered Valkyrie? No. Oh, but that, that's a pretty funny one. Anyway, last time you should have seen some notes that you read yesterday. Yes? yes. <laughs> and you should have noticed that they came in pairs. So we had a vector and a scalar version of several numbers. So we had speed and velocity, and speed was scalar, and velocity was vector. We had distance and displacement. Distance was scalar, displacement was vector. So the scalar numbers were worried only about how big the number was, which is the magnitude. Magnitude means size. That's a vocabulary word you should know. Magnitude means size. What's the magnitude of my IQ? I would tell you, but it would hurt too much for you guys to count that high. So um, magnitude is just number. That's size. So the scalar numbers are only concerned with how big is the number going. If you're driving past an elementary school going 65, the officer is just going to say you were going 65. He's going to give you a magnitude there. A vector number, on the other hand, has both that magnitude, the size, but also a direction. So including that direction, it gives us more information. And we gave you an example yesterday of you were in a wreck. Anybody actually read this thing yesterday? Yes. Okay, just checking. So if you were in a wreck, what was the example I used? If you're on 25 pounds. Yeah, so if you're going like 25 and somebody who's going 30 hits you, is it a bad wreck or not? Well, it depends. If he was going 30 and he hits you from behind, then that's just kind of scary, but it's not going to be bad. But if you were going 25 and he's going 30 the other direction, then I'm going to have to bring in your homework in the hospital. And that's, uh, I didn't say you that. Yeah, I actually do that. So if I find out you're in the hospital, I go to the hospital and I tutor you and... You're there in crutches and casts and things you can't write, but I, I'm still there tutoring you because I'm nice like that. So <clears throat> the vector numbers give us more information, and more information is generally a better thing. <clears throat> hey. I'm applying for a new film loan. Go by the name of Vector. That's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, as I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Okay, does anybody else think he looks just like Bill Gates? <laughs> yeah, okay. But typically in the movies, when the movies do physics, they do a horrible job of it. But here, they actually did it right. That was the definition of vector. It, it was scary. I was so excited. It's like a movie got physics right. 
<clears throat> okay, so we're going to practice. If I start here, and I'm going to walk that way 15 steps. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. How many of you were surprised I could count that high? <laughs> if I walk 15 steps forward, then what distance have I covered? 15 steps, but what was my displacement? 15 steps forward. Yeah, or 15 steps northeast, or 15 steps yonder, 15 steps towards the people who aren't supposed to be here. It's not 15 steps, possibly you can cover that in five. Oh, shh. Anyway, so when we look at this in a nice straight line distance, was there much difference between distance and displacement? No, but if I change directions in my trip, if I turn around and now I'm going to walk 10 more steps, so what number am I on? 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So now if I walk 10 steps back, my total distance I have traveled is 25 steps, but my displacement is just five steps forward. So if you started where I started and you went five steps forward, where would you be? Where you are. You would be giving me a hug right now. It would be a special moment. But um, So if we're going on a straight trip, here it was 15 meters, here it was 15 meters forward, or northeast, or something. So the only difference is if I'm going in a straight trip is the displacement has that direction added. But if I switch over to changing directions, which one ended up being shorter? The displacement. If I change directions, displacement will always be shorter because it's going to go from a straight line from start to finish. So which kind of number is more valuable to us? Generally, displacement is better than distance because it gets more information, and more information, again, is generally better. Now, yesterday on your assignment, you had to work with some word problems. And some of you, whenever you see word problems, you see this kind of lettering in your head because you're like, no, I don't know how to do these, man. I have. So some of you have had horrible success with word problems in the past. And that's going to change in this class because I'm going to teach you how to do them right. And if you learn how to do them right, and you learn how to do the little steps, then you got it made. It's really easy. They are much simpler than people give themselves credit for. The most important trick is to read the unit. I do not mean open up a book and read unit two type thing. I'm saying the unit is that little letter that appears after numbers. And they tell us stuff. So 14.3 meters per second in 12 days, you tell what kind of numbers they are based on the unit that's following them here. So I can't tell based on 14.3 what kind of number it is, but if I see meters per second, I know what kind of number it is. So that unit afterwards tells me what they are. So what happens is every time we learn a new term, there's going to be a new unit that goes with it, and you have to get that stuck in your head. So, so far we know that seconds, minutes, and hours are all units of? Time. Time. And that one was really easy because you've been learning time ever since, like, second grade. In second grade, you learned the mysteries of the clock, and you learned the big hand and the little hand, and it was all fun. And, and then shortly after that, you got introduced to digital clocks, and now you can't read a normal one anyway. But um, some people still can't read these because they're so used to digital. But time is easy because you've used it for a long time, and you don't realize that you've actually memorized this. But what you have done is you have memorized that every time you see seconds or minutes or hours, that you're thinking time. And so what happens is every time we learn new stuff, like yesterday I introduced meters per second and meters in kilometers, and these might have been new to you, and they were freaking you out. Anytime you see any form of meter, whether it's meter, kilometer, petameter, terameter, micrometer, these are all going to be units of distance or displacement. Generally speaking, we will deal in displacement, so don't freak out too much between the two of them. If you have meters per second or kilometers per hour, those are both units that will work for either speed or velocity, and again, we will deal in velocity almost exclusively, so just deal with that one too. <coughs> um, 
But there's nothing to this as long as you get it stuck in your head. You have to get these stuck in your head. Now, in the last couple days, I have stuck 105 names into my head that match a face. I had to sit there and study. And while you guys were taking your test yesterday, I was staring at you and staring at my sheet and going back and forth. And yeah, okay, I'm getting that one. And then I'm twisting myself mentally over back and forth, all different directions, not going in. And, and it worked out today. I was able to pass out all the papers right. I had to put in some time. Here you don't have so much time. There's only a couple things to remember. But you still got to get them stuck in your head. If you st start guessing at the unit, then you're going to guess right sometimes and you're going to guess wrong most of the time. And if you pick the wrong unit, then you're going to pick the wrong variable. You're going to pick the wrong formula. Everything's going to go downhill really, really fast. So the really, really big trick is get this stuck in your head. So if I see 156 mm's, that's a? <coughs> Duh. So that's going to be a displacement. If I see 156 meters per second, that's going to be a? That's going to be flying, because that's a really fast velocity. If I see 156 kilometers per hour, that is also a velocity. Now, notice all three times I use the word 156, so the 156 doesn't tell me what it is. The 156 tells me how big it is. That's the magnitude part. But the unit tells me what kind of number it is. When I see mm, I think duh. When I see meters per second, I see velocity. When I see kilometers per hour, I also see velocity. How do I know that this is a slower velocity than that one is? They, have, they both say 156. Aren't they the same? Yeah, it's like if I'm pay, paying you in pennies or if I'm paying you in dollars. It makes a difference, right? So <clears throat> how do I convert between the two? Sometimes you need to convert between kilometers per hour and meters per second. We do this by dividing by 3.6. 3.6 is a magic number that showed up on your note sheet yesterday. How did we get that magic number 3.6? Oh, it's 3,600 divided by 1,000. No, God just appeared to me in a vision one night, and he said 3.6 shall be the number. And I said, thanks, man. No, yeah. <laughs> God gave us a brain instead. And when, when you have to convert, if I'm going from kilometers per hour to meters per second, well, first I say, hey, how many meters are in a kilometer? And you say that's that's a thousand because by definition kilo means a thousand. And then I say, well, how many seconds are in an hour? And there's always people who want to say sixty, but there's sixty seconds in a minute, and then sixty minutes in an hour. Sixty times sixty is three thousand six hundred. So if I take that three thousand six hundred and I take that a thousand, and I get rid of all the zeros and stuff, I'm left with <laughs> what do you know? 3.6 is magic little conversion number. Now, if I'm looking at 3.6, I'm going to say, how many sig figs are in that? Two. No. Four. No. Four. No. None. What? <laughs> I know. I can say no for a reason. Say it again. None. No. <laughs> but nice try. There's unlimited sig figs in there. There are unlimited sig figs because we only keep track of sig figs because our no, our measurements have <coughs> uncertainty. Hey, some of you got that right on the test yesterday and some of you didn't. Anyway, we have some uncertainty in that last digit of a measurement, right? But how much uncertainty do we have in these numbers? None. None. None because we have a thousand here because that by definition kilo means a thousand. Did you ever have a kilometer and you're like, dude, I measured this out and I only got 996. We got ripped off. It's by definition a thousand, right? And how many of you have bonus seconds in your minutes? It doesn't happen, right? So this is by definition numbers. So since these are by definition numbers, there is no uncertainty in it. Which means if I'm going to try and convert this into this, if I'm taking the 156, how many sig figs are in that? Three. So how many should I have afterwards? Three. So that's what we do with this. And so if I'm going to convert with the 3.6, I'll take the 156, and I'll divide by 3.6, and then I'll round to three sig figs because the 156 has that. So if you did that, what would you get?
You get 43.3. Now, is 43.3 smaller than 156? Yes. Yeah, so see if they're in the same unit, then you can compare them really easily. And you say, oh, yeah, this velocity is way smaller than that one. So it, it works out like that. So <clears throat> we're going to actually stop here as far as that lesson goes, and we'll pick up with the rest of it tomorrow to make it super, super simple. Today we are going to do a lab, and the lab is going to help us understand the difference between distance and displacement. And so in a moment, I am going to hand to you this sheet of paper. But first, you'll just get to look at it here. So we have the distance displacement lab, and it, it's real simple, but it's going to help us understand better the difference between distance and displacement. We are going to use this map that is found on the back. Isn't that pretty? That's where my mom lives. Isn't that nice? She lives on Fowler Circle. My mother has lived in this house for 53 years. She's lived in that house for 53 years. I never lived on Fowler Circle. So she moved in right after you moved out? I moved out 53 years ago? <laughs> I don't know how old you are. I'm going to be 52 next month. So no. Okay, never mind. I thought you guys would be interested in that, but apparently not. Okay, so. They had two houses. Not what about your dad? Or what about him? Did you like to live with your dad? You guys have two houses? No, dad lived here too, and he, he died last year, so. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Well, you didn't kill him. So, I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> So how did you not live on Fowler Circle? Uh, no. Oh, I mean Fowler. You lived in the yes. shack in back of the house. My parents lived there for 50 some years. And I never lived on Fowler Circle. Oh, oh it's it just oh, wait, that's the street. Just the street. That's the street. Very good. Yes, I lived in this house. But when I lived in that house, it was called Fowler Avenue. And after I moved out, they changed the name of my street. So, well, uh, I see if you guys could think I creatively so. there. <laughs> I didn't, I, I said I never oh, lived on Fowler Circle. Lived on Fowler Circle. <laughs> <laughs> I lived on that street, though. Okay, anyway, in this, we are going to do some stuff where we're going to figure out distance and displacement. So here we're going to have a scale, and the scale we're going to use is one centimeter is equal to 100 meters. So whatever you measure on here in centimeters, we multiply by 100, and that matches reality. And it doesn't really match reality. I just made up this map. I mean, it's it's not drawn perfectly to scale or anything. But we're going to pretend. Now, so that we are all nice and uniform, we are going to measure from dot to dot so that we all are measuring from the same spot. So I've placed these little dots in the street. So if mom is going to go to the library, if I want to know the distance from mom's house to the library, which I have to do in the first place, the distance, of course, mom's going to travel down Fowler Avenue, circle, excuse me, and then she's going to make a ride on Tomahawk Boulevard, and then she's going to travel down 90th Street until she gets to the library. In reality, the library's on this side, but, but it was easy to draw over. You go to mom's house and you get confused on how to get to the library. So it's weird. Um, anyway, so we're going to measure those, and that would be the distance. But if I ask what is the displacement from mom's house to the library, then what's going to happen is we're going to pretend that my mom is a wild off roader and she's just going to go in this perfectly straight line from there to there. Okay, so that would be the displacement. So mom doesn't really do that. There are people who live here that would be bad. So um, she's not going to drive like that. But if you want to find a displacement, you would travel in a perfectly straight line from start to finish. Everybody get that? Yeah. So you're going to be making these kind of things. And then you're going to be, after you're taking all these measurements, then you are going to be asking questions up here and 
filling in all the answers and, and, and stuff. And you're going to have a great time. So um, we'll pass these out and get started.